How many times have you been great in your career when all your skills came together and elevated you? How many times do you think you've really been great? Oh, God, a lot. Uh, a few times. Hot butter soul, for one. Great disc. Uh, then it continued with the movement. And then it continued with uh, uh, Look of Love and it just kept going. And then Shaft was another level. Uh, it just kept going. Live at Tahoe, my first live album. Black Moses. Kept going. Black Moses, exactly. So it was, you know, one thing after another, just kept going. And which one of all those albums still to this day speaks to you the most? I think Hot Butter Soul. Because? Because it was, it was so innovative. At that time, I didn't know it. As I said, it was a very selfish move on my part. Because nobody was doing album tracks. That's everybody, it. Everybody was doing singles. That's it. It opened the door. Absolutely. It opened the door for album sales, Absolutely. black album sales. Absolutely. It opened the door for album cover, cover concepts. It opened the door to the arrangements for these strings and horns put together. It opened the door for the for the uh, the rapping on, on these records. It opened that door. It, it did so many things. And, and as I said, these long cuts. It opened the door for all of that. So it was so innovative, but it took time to realize and look back and see what it did. When I was in the middle of it, I, did, I was just being different and being selfish. But you were different. You sounded different. You looked different. You were an individualist, unique, special. Your music, your look. Speak to your self-image. Tell me about how you see yourself. Well, I've looked at this ugly mug all my life. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. But you have your own uniqueness. Well, you know, I wanted, I didn't want to be like everybody else. Uh, when I would go to concerts, I would see these entertainers go on stage, and the first thing they do is loosen their tie. They, when they go out to the shop, they got three-piece suits and stuff like that shop. But when they go out, they're going to do this. I'm saying, why do they do that? Why don't they? be prepared when they go out, don't have to disrobe. So the first thing I did, I, I said, I'm gonna go out just as I am. I used to wear rawhide fringe tops. And then I switched to uh, a chain necklace, bare everything else. And I wanted to wear tights, I wanted to be different. If, if, if Bresnik calls them can wear tights on stage when they're doing ballet, why can't I? So I, I, I wore the tights. So the idea actually came to you. Yes. I wore the tights and chains. And a guy named Charles Rubin said, I can make some more chains. I'll make you chains, vests, and blah, blah, blah. So he wore me, made me all kind of chain things. And it was different. I liked it. And the thing that gave me an idea about the head, about the skull, the first gig I played was in, Chicago, in, in Detroit, Masonic Temple. And I had a big flop hat on. And it was getting hot, so I just said, I took the thing, I just wiped my head and laid the screen when I took my head cap off. I made a middle note of that. I said, mm-hmm, okay. <laughs> so then that's when I, I walk out with a flop hat and I take it off and, 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 and I found a Pucci cape at Saks Fifth Avenue, Medio Pucci, name stencil all over the fabric. And I w walk out, I wouldn't give them too much too soon, so I walk out with a cape and a flop hat. And then I go out, get out there and, and the dancer, Helen Washington, bald head girl, she would take the cap off, they would scream. <laughs> and then I would do this and... They eat it up with a spoon. Eat it up, eat it up. And I went to full orchestrations, the horns and strings live. Everybody told me I was crazy. It's too much money, it's expensive, blah, 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 blah. Well, I'd go out and see guys on stage with three pieces. And the record has got a full orchestral accompaniment. Why not give them what they came exactly. to see? Exactly. And exactly. let them hear what they came to see. So that's when I started putting these horns and strings together, orchestras. And after a while, some other people started doing it. But I was the first to do that. And when a guy come to a concert with his lady on his arm, and you hear the flutes over there in the arrangement, they would respond, yeah, yeah, we can give them what they want. Exactly. And that's, 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 how, I, that's how that happened. Shaft. The Grammy Awards aside, mm -hmm. the Academy Award. That was the pinnacle of my success. Was that the most crowning moment for you? Yes, for a number of reasons. Um, 
As you earlier stated, I was the first African-American to win an Oscar in music. The third to win an Oscar, period, behind Hattie McDaniel, Sidney Poitier, right. then me. Right. Um, you see, when I was a kid, I prayed that the Lord would let my grandmother be around when I hit the big times. Because that old lady, she raised me. My mother passed when I was a year and a half. She was everything to you, I think. Yes, everything. So I wanted to thank her. I wanted, to, I wanted to share something with her. Let her be in the midst of it. So when I was nominated for an Oscar, everybody, you know, thought I was going to take, man, you're going to fall in with a fine chick on your arm, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm taking my grandmother. She was my date because she had to be there. And, you know, I was living in Beverly Hills, and I had a house out there, and I was... I took her out to my house and showed her the grounds, walking around looking at the grounds and everything. And she stopped and said, oh my God, I never did think I'd live to see this. I choked, fought the tears because I knew what she was saying. I knew what she meant. Uh, that emotional umbilical cord. Oh yes, oh. The it, lifeline. Yes. Family. It was great, it was wonderful and I, I I had the opportunity to share that with her. In the limousine on the way to the Oscars, on the freeway, I'm nervous, I'm, oh God. I was nominated in two categories, but I was scared to death. Uh, you know, misery loves company. I said, Mama, you nervous? No. Fine, help you turn out to be. <laughs> so anyway, we got there and you know, you step out on the red carpet and all this, she was waving. And I had a, I had a, I had her hooked up, man. She had a mink stole, had a big rock, had a Gibson girl wig with the ball in the back, all those things, man. Pedicure, manicure, and uh, we walked in. We met celebrities inside, who, the well wishers, and you know, um, Robert Wagner. He had a series called, uh, what was it? Takes a thief. It takes a thief. Yes. Right? He walked up and you know wished me well. I introduced him to my grandmother. She said, uh, "You had Alexander Monday." <laughs> right. The character name, you know, <laughs> right, right, it cracked him up. You know, it, it, it was wonderful. And then, you know, I had to. We sat in the seats and everything. I said, "Mama, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna win. It's, I'm just glad to be here." She said, "Oh, you gonna win? Don't worry about it. You gonna win?" So the first category came up, and Michelle Legrand, summer '42, he won. I said, "I told you, you ain't gonna win." And then I had to perform. I had to run, snatch my seat, run downstairs, and do what I had to do, and you know, uh, put my chain on and everything, and he wheeled me out at the organ. I did that. I said, "Oh God, let me mess up." Anyway, that was great. I didn't appreciate it until I had seen the Kenny afterwards filmed, uh, and then it went, I went down through the floor with, with the smoke, put my tux back on and everything, and then ran out to my seat to sit down. So my category came up, the final category that I was in. My girl said, "Oh well, you win." And when they call my name, I don't remember walking to the stage. I just remember walking across the stage and hearing Sammy Davis behind the curtains hugging Joe Gray. I told you, I told you, I told you, I told you. It was bedlam. It was, it was sweet bedlam. And I had no speech prepared because I didn't think I was going to win. So I just said what I felt at the moment, which is the best way to do Absolutely. all the sincerity. And I thanked Stax Records and the organization and all that, and I thanked my grandmother in front of millions of people around the world. I had my moment. I had my moment. And thank you, God, keeping her around for, for me to be able to do this. She was your support system. Yes, yes. What kept you going? My grandmother's words and then my desire to achieve to overcome the obstacles that l l laid before me. When you look to the future, mm -hmm. what do you see for Isaac Hayes? I see a continuation of things that he's doing, an expansion of the things that he's doing. Um, I want to, as I said, do more. I want to do more music, which I'm going to. I want to do more acting, which I'm going to. But I want to be influential 
as to bring some good to humanity. If it doesn't make a mark, Isaac Hayes ain't doing it. AIDS, HIV, is big in Africa. We're fighting that at my school now. Like I said, health education. We had, last year and this year, we had 43 doctors. All these activities is centered around my school. The area in which my school, which I'm in school as, as Nene, is called Ada, A-D-A. It's in south east corner of the country, bordered on the east by the Volta River on the south by the Atlantic Ocean. Beautiful place. Uh, but I want Ada to be the crown jewel. And we work hard. We, we, we have, we've got a lot of footage on what we're doing, a lot of footage on, on people contracting AIDS, we get the message out to them how to stop it, how to stop the spread. And you do that through education, and you also do it through getting out in the villages. And these doctors are providing a lot, these young doctors from these universities in this country. They go over there, and it is self-rewarding, self-fulfilling. Isaac, you touch millions and millions and millions of lives with your music and with the Isaac Hayes Foundation. Thank you for doing this. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you.